is our turkey vulture. Now most birds, they have a very poor sense of smell, but not the turkey vulture, no. He uses his enhanced sense of smell to locate carrion. Carrion, you know, a nice way of saying dead animals. Yeah, well once he finds that carcass, he will fly on down to the ground. Then with total grace, he will walk on over to it, jump on top, and stick that beautiful bear head deep down inside and begin to feast. Now turkey vultures, they may be the first ones to find dinner, but guess what? They rarely get to eat first, and that's because their more aggressive cousins are usually waiting close by, ready to steal the meal. And rather than fight for the food, turkey vultures, they resort to waiting in the wings for leftovers. And Buzz, I think you have some leftovers waiting in the wings. Yeah, that deer is fake. You should know that by now. Four years we've been doing this. How about you come on down here? <laughs> He's like, no, this is the Buzz show now. We're not gonna rename this show after you, buddy. So why don't you come on and get your leftovers backstage? There we go. Doing the vulture strut. Slowly but surely, he's making his way off stage. <laughs> for his leftovers in the wing. Let's give it up for Buzz. Yo, because you see, the black vulture, he doesn't have the same sense of smell as the turkey vulture does. So instead of using his nose to find food, he simply follows the turkey vulture. Now vultures do nest on the ground, and that makes them very vulnerable to predators. But don't worry, folks. They have developed a very effective form of defense. It's called projectile vomit. <laughs> yeah, think about what their food smells like going down. Can you imagine what it smells like coming back up? I mean, if you were a predator with a good sense of smell, would you still have an appetite after that? I don't think so. Now that may seem pretty gross. The vultures, they were actually very clean animals. You see, these guys will spend hours each day sunning themselves, allowing the ultraviolet rays of the sun to kill any bacteria on those feathers. And when you wear your dinner on your head, you need an easy cleanup. So that bald head theirs would be washed, rinsed, and away they go. And that was Buzz and Ned, nature's cleanup crew. Why don't you guys head on out of here, Ned? follow turkey vultures, but Ned there, he just follows turkeys. <laughs> that is funny. We're the turkeys. All right, well, being a wild animal and no longer has a fear of cats, dogs, or humans, and can no longer survive on her own in the wild. And this is an owlie, our gray fox. But most fox are known to be quick and agile as they run through fields. She uses her agility to spring from tree to tree with the greatest of ease. That long tail aids in the balancing act, and along came that nose, gives her an excellent sense of smell, so she can even find that geocache box. Geocaching folks is a modern day scavenger hunt, and if this scavenger can do it, so can you. Owl. While finding food at night can be quite a challenge, owls use their excellent nighttime vision and ability of silent flight to be best nocturnal hunters. Now, barn owls are the most adaptable owl and can be found on all continents except Antarctica. And barn owls get their names because they like to live and hunt in barns and other man-made structures. Now if you look at the shape of their facial discs, you might be able to tell why some people refer to them as the heart-faced owl or the monkey-faced owl. And it's actually because of the shape of this disc that they have the best hearing of all birds. While one, well, most owls need a little bit of light in order to hunt, barn owls can hunt in total darkness using their hearing alone. And one family of barn owls can actually catch thousands of mice in just one three month breeding season, which just goes to show how great of a mouse trap these guys really are. Hi there. Oh, here. <laughs> um, I see you're trying to get some good pictures. Have you gotten any good pictures yet? Not yet, none of us. Picture time, here he comes. There we go, is that pretty cool? I am sure you'd spit it back up, right? Yeah, and without mates to clean up after them, barn owls leave their regurgitated leftovers of fur and bone for us to find. So the 
next time you're looking for a barn owl, don't look up, look down. But for now, let's thank Cricket for eating all those rodents. Thank you, Cricket. Well, Bertie will dive down, determined to dine on a delightful delicacy. And this is our red-tailed hawk coming out here. His name is Araya, and Araya's here because unfortunately, he got hit by a car and can no longer see in his left eye. He can't see well enough to hunt on his own and survive in the wild. Let's give him a hand for that beautiful flight. Now, red-tailed hawks can easily be identified by their belly band and their rusty red tail that you can see as they soar. There are over a million red-tailed hawks found throughout the U.S., and each is as individually marked as our own fingerprints. And not known for having a particularly thick palate, red-tailed hawks, they'll eat almost anything they can kill, including other birds and reptiles, and they've even been known to successfully take down rattlesnakes. Pretty cool, huh? But most of all, red-tailed hawks love to eat rodents. A hawk like Araya can eat hundreds of mice in just one year, which shows you how important they are in the natural scheme of things. So the next time you're heading down I-5, or on your way home from work, or just on your way home from Turtle Bay today, look to the sky, because you never know, you might see a red-tailed hawk. Our national symbol, the bald eagle, is exotic while a cockatoo is as common as a crow. And this is Gidget and Monroe, our cockatoos. You know, to us, cockatoos are beautiful, exotic creatures, but to an Aussie, they are an everyday occurrence. Usually seen flying in flocks of hundreds, they can completely devour an entire field of fruit in no time flat. Now, farmers may not appreciate their appetite, but they are very important for the environment. You see, they leave behind seeds that help to replant the trees of the forest and provide food and homes for other animals. So as we complete our adventure today, it's time for you guys to head out on your own. Whether you're birding in the Amazon or geocaching down by our sundial bridge, have some fun exploring the nature around you. Bring your friends and family and share your appreciation for wildlife. After all, one touch of nature does make the whole world kin. We would like to thank you all for joining us for this edition of the Walk on the Wild Side show.